After a near national title run in 1999, Florida A&M knew what had to be done in the year 2000. The Rattlers set out in search of another crowning moment. Danger! FAMU's drive to the top began slowly against Delaware State in Dover. Rattler offense struggled to a 21 to 14 halftime lead, but in the third quarter, hard running Kelsey Lordius punched in three touchdowns to lift the Rattlers to a 49 to 21 victory. Lordius rushed for 121 yards on 17 carries, but suffered a separated shoulder. side of the field for Quinn Gray. Looking to pass, blitz on the way, tosses for the fade pattern. Isaac Brown's got a touchdown, FAMU. FAMU came home to face Morgan State and the Gulf Coast offense exploded with 39 first half points. four touchdown passes, completing 28 of 46 for a career-high 390 yards. Freshman kicker Juan Vasquez connected on five field goals, a new school record. FAMU mauled Morgan State 56 to 25 and moved to 2-0 and in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. took the Rattlers to Jacksonville, where they crushed South Carolina State 76-17 in 99. on numerous Bulldog mistakes, including a blocked punt by Andre Brooks, who recovered it in the end zone for a score. Gwen Gray accounted for five touchdowns, throwing for three, and running for another two. Jaquay Nunnally stayed on pace to become the all-time leading receiver in college football, catching seven passes for 128 yards, two two-point conversions, and a touchdown. A 64-9 blowout.
formation. Amariah Rob, the lone set back for Kenton Evans. Evans back to pass, lays it out for Morgan. It's picked off by Troy Hart. Troy Hart is on his way. Five, touchdown, fam you. Troy Hart goes in. Week four, the Rattlers journey to the Georgia Dome, seeking revenge from Tennessee State after a 42-25 loss in 99. never looked back as Quinn Gray threw a 30-yard strike to Marco Junius, scored on a two-yard run, and O.J. Marchbanks added a one-yard plunge. But it was converted defensive back Troy Hart who sealed the win with a 33-yard interception for a touchdown. The payback was intact, 31-6. to beat in the MEAC. The Rattler defense was menacing as linebacker Patrick Burrell stopped Bison running back Jermaine Hutchinson in the end zone for a safety. Jaquay Nunley continued his march toward becoming the all-time leading receiver in college football with snaring touchdown passes of 14 and 25 yards respectively. And the juice got loose. OJ Marchbank scored on a 41 yard run. For the second straight week, it was Troy Hart picking off a pass and returning it for a touchdown. This time, going the distance, 99 yards. Damn you, 43. Howard, nothing. Classic date with Grambling. Mamu's opening drive stalled at the Grambling one on a fumble. The Tigers counted with a 99 yard touchdown pass. to a Grambling 12-10 win. Despite the loss, defensive end Jerron Daly was impressive. City Classic, the Rattlers returned home to the friendly confines of Bragg Memorial Stadium. 
redemption was on their minds as they sought to get back on track and avenge last year's loss to North Carolina A&T, which cost them the conference championship and the Black College National Championship. Turnovers once again did the Rattlers in as the Aggies rolled to a 30 to 10 win. Running back Maurice Hicks rushed for a career high 236 yards and two touchdowns, the most ever by an opposing running back in FAMU football history. Washington as uh, John Roberts back to pass. He's hit by Gerard Daly. The ball pops out. There's a bubble on the play, and the Rattlers have recovered it, picked it up, and it's Evie Parsons. Touchdown, FAMU. Evie Parsons on his birthday gets a touchdown. FAMU rebounded on the road at Norfolk State with a 42-14 win as Greg Ray delivered a punishing hit on special teams, and Jaquay Nunnally scored on a 51-yard touchdown pass. With the win, the Rattlers were back in stride again. runs of 20 and 15 yards, and Quinn Gray tossed four touchdown passes, two to Marco Junius, and two to Jaquay Nunnally, who closed to within 11 receptions of Jerry Rice's record of 301 career receptions, the best ever in college football history. who sprinted 18 yards for a touchdown. The Rattlers rolled on homecoming 53 to 24. Dreading the blitz now back off. Gray wants to pass. Demps up. 
as time delivers. Yeah. Got his man. That's none of the, He is the all-time leading receiver. He's at the 35 of Southern and bounced out of bounds at the 33-yard line. First down, Florida A&M. And he is now all-time leading receiver in college football history, passing the great Jerry Rice. Jaquay Nunley just surpasses Jerry Rice. took the Rattlers to Red Stick or Baton Rouge, Louisiana to meet Southern and an old-fashioned shootout erupted. Jaguars and Rattlers traded scores in a game with little defense. Quinn Gray tossed three touchdown passes, completing 29 of 55 passes for 376 yards, including a 77-yard strike to Marco Juniors to start the second half. Marchbanks kept the Jaguars at bay and opened up the passing lanes as Gray connected with Nunnally for 16 catches and 155 yards. Nunnally's performance made him college football all-time leading receiver, breaking Jerry Rice's Mississippi Valley State record that stood 16 years. Juan Vasquez delivered the knockout blow with only 21 seconds left. Vasquez booted a 29-yard field goal to lift the Rattlers to their fourth straight win over Southern, 50 to 49. It is my great privilege and pleasure to present the MEAC Football Championship Trophy to Florida A&M University. fielded its best team in 25 years and promised a real classic. That brought another sellout crowd and playoff dreams. In the end, it would be a different song, but the same old story. were called, but hosting was not in the cards. FAMU hit the road to Bowling Green to meet the Hilltoppers of Western Kentucky. Western strength was defense, and on this cold, rainy, and dreary day, their defense was dominant. 
FAMU made the adjustments in the second half to stop the triple I option, but it was too little, too late. Western prevailed and advanced 27 to nothing. Another crowning moment. Danger! 